I guess Michael was uh, just could not keep a tempo very well at all. So much so that they actually played the first shows with him and the drum machine, just kind of as a metronome, to kind of keep him on target. You can teach someone how to keep time. You can't teach someone how to like basically put themselves in at risk of bodily injury, you know, just just to get the rock out. It's funny, I've seen a lot of kind of crappily shot footage of the band. And like, when he was on and he played well, it didn't fucking matter what we did. It didn't matter if you could hear the vocals or whatever, it didn't matter, because if he was on, then everything was, was great. The drumming is very hard hat and lunch pail. Hard hat and lunch pail. Hard hat and lunch pail. Boom, thwack, boom, thwack. I remember Michael doing this thing where he wore garden gloves and he duct taped the sticks to the gloves so that when he played, because he played so friggin' hard, that when he played, it was still stuck to the gloves. I'll never forget the first time I walked up after a Silkworm show, I looked down and just saw all this broken stick pieces and looked down and actually noticed that the rim of his snare drum had actually been bent. Yeah, Michael was always just famous for just pummeling the shit out of drum kits. I even remember that night, sort of after they were done, going up and going, oh, that's so great. Michael Dahlquist dented my <laughs> rack tom. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first thing he did when he came in is put a snare drum on the ground and blow dry the head. <laughs> he blow dry the head for like 10 minutes, like, <clears throat> I guess to get the dents out. And, you know, the genius thing about Michael, too, in addition to just being a great drummer, is just I love the fact that that guy sweat more than anybody I ever met. Hey, 